five reasons why you should plan your sewing. So planning your sewing is about creating a list before the time knowing exactly what it is that you need, what it is you want to do so that you are more focused, so you can actually use your time more productively. As you know, we're all so busy, we have so little time that we can actually do the things that we love. So when we do have that time, let's make it work and be more productive. So planning your sewing, I have this book on my website, I'll leave the link down below, go and have a look, check it out. It helps you, especially if you're a beginner, of how to plan your sewing as well as how to make more time for you to actually sew and to make the garments that you want to learn to sew or put together. It inspired you to get you going to be more organized and to plan your shopping and plan your sewing ahead of the time. If you enjoy this kind of like sharing skills with you all about sewing, then how about giving me some love, you know, help me to grow and share my channel by pressing that subscribe button down below and if you have any comments please share it with me down below and i will come back to you with an answer of how i can guide you help you motivate you and answer you in any other way but yeah this is tanya sutherland it's about planning your sewing with the time that you have and knowing that you have all the right haberdashery the notions that you need to start a project so the first thing would be is you need to know what it is that you want to make so i always suggest create a little vision board of ideas and designs that you like go and spend some time at your local fabric store go and have a look at the patterns but now just remember when you go look at the patterns you're going to get all excited oh i like this i like that you need to start off simple look at designs that say beginner, you know, easy to sew, so that you know that you're still in your comfort zone and your confidence level of what it is that you can sew right now. The back of the pattern will always tell you what types of notions, haberdasheries that you will need. So go home and check your, go and have a look at your stash of fabrics, go and have a look at all your trims and your notions that you have. Do you have the basic zips? Do you have hook and eyes? Do you have buttons? Do you have thread, a picker, pins, needles, a good pair of scissors? All those kind of things that you can need because you're gonna to have to have your sewing kit as well. So you need to plan that little list of sewing kit that you're gonna to need to start with your sewing. The other thing is, what area are you going to be using to sew? Do you have a table that you can work with? Do you have a good light? Um, you know, can you close the door when you walk out? Or are you kind of using an area in the house that you're sharing with another kind of facility that you're using it for? Like the kitchen, dining room, lounge, um, your social room where your friends all get together or the kids are hanging out. So try and look at where it is that you are going to be sewing. I always reckon find an allocated area that you know that you can use that is your space because that is your creative juice area where you are working and sewing and creating these new beautiful products that you are putting together. You don't have to start off with the most expensive table, the most expensive lights or the most expensive sewing machines. Just get started with the basics that you have right now and what you can afford. Your vision board of ideas, you can look at some patterns. Look at designs that you know that you might already have in your wardrobe or have tried on before, knowing that it actually fits and suits your body shape. If you're not sure, go and have a look at some um, patterns and go to the fabric stores and go and look for garments that you saw with the patterns, taking some photographs and try them on first because sometimes you try a whole new pattern, a new design and you spend all this time cutting out, sewing, pinning and putting it together and the garment doesn't suit you at all and you wasted that time and money. So rather, part of the planning, make sure that that design suits your body. So I hope that gives you a bit more ideas. Don't just go out and go, oh, I like this pattern, I'll try this, try that. Try something that you know already works in the design element for your body. 
The other thing is, once you know all your haberdasheries and the notions that you've got, you know that you can actually now plan your next project. So you go through your pattern, see what fabrics you require, what notions you require, what part of your sewing kit you might still need, and draw up your list. And in my book, I actually give you quite a bit of guidelines of all the different types of things that you are going to be needing to, you know, your guided sewing planner, as well as organize from your first stitch to organize um, tips that are giving you how to make more time to sew, setting aside time with, with our very busy, hectic lifestyles, um, and also being organized to save a lot of time and money, and how to actually use your fabric, and how to pack your fabric, how to store it, and how to, you know, put the names and to put on how much material, etc., impacts that you've got how to pack it, how to put your design and sketches of what you're going to be making per fabric that you have thought about when you go and buy material. It's how to, how to stock everything, how to create containers or packing space for all your haberdashery and your notions, etc. So it's a lot of things to help you as a beginner and um, how to become more organized. Um, this, this is something I created especially for my, my designing and my sewing students to help them get more organized. So that you know things can go a bit much more efficient and things go a lot quicker so they're not wasting money or time because what happens is you, you tend to go to the fabric store and you go and duplicate stuff because you've forgotten what you have or you can't see what you have and you end up buying things double so you can avoid that completely by following a kind of a plan so can we start off with your little um, ideas of what it is that you like, what colors, what you like prints, what kind of designs so that you have a better vision of what it is that you would like to plan to sew. Now, one of the most important things to do is that when you go to a fabric store is you need to go with a plan. So in the book, I even have a little sheet how to draw up a little list of a plan when you go with, go to the fabric store so you're getting the very precise things of what you need a little tick list of i'm making this particular garment this particular pattern i need to get this type of fabric i need a zip i need the thread i need the buttons i need some press studs i need a hook and eye i need some interfacing and you have your little list so that when you go into the store this happens to all of us you walk into the store and you get completely like mesmerized with all this beautiful fabric and you just want to buy and you go, I'll make this later on, or I'll buy this now, and I'll think of something later on. And you end up just having the stash of fabric that you don't use. Rather go with a plan and come back to your little sewing room or your sewing studio and get started with your project that you planned with absolute detail. So I hope this inspired you. Until the next video, this is Tanya Sutherland.